Hi, I'm Mike Sintolo, Chief Analyst of Cabot Growth Investor and Cabot Top 10 Trader. And I'm here with your Cabot Weekly Review. I'm recording this Friday morning on January 12th, also known as the first Cabot Weekly Review video when Bill Belichick wasn't the head coach of the Patriots, <laughs> which has been the big news around here this week. Um, in terms of the market, I mean, honestly, it's playing out kind of like a typical volatile January, like we wrote about at the end of the year. The first week of the year was kind of like, yeesh, seeing a lot of stocks fall six, seven, eight percent, leading stocks, I mean, that have had good runs, but not a lot of real abnormal action, not many breakdowns, so to speak. And then this week, we've seen a lot that have powered ahead 10 percent or more. A lot of them moved to new highs, that sort of thing. Um, I would say the broad market hasn't really bounced back yet, which is something to watch. But, you know, to this point, it's still in a normal pullback. So we'll see how it goes. You know, intermediate term, nothing really had changed last week and nothing's changed this week. The trends are still up for the major indexes, most sectors, most stocks. You know, the trend of interest rates is down. Uh, you know, defensive stocks aren't roaring ahead, speculative stocks, you know, junk stocks aren't totally spiking, that sort of thing. So, you know, we'll see how it goes, but intermediate term trends still bullish. You know, I'm still obviously much more bullish than not. Um, short term, that said, you know, we're not, last week we weren't um, ignoring the action, but I wasn't panicking. And this week I'm not popping any champagne bottles either. I mean, I think, you know, we're still in the middle of January, obviously. We now we have earnings season kicking off today was kind of big banks and, you know, like Delta Airlines, some of the big stocks. But as we, you know, move on the next two, three weeks, we're going to have more and more sort of, you know, key leading stocks reporting. So we'll see how it goes. I kind of half expect more ups and downs. I'm not predicting anything, but, you know, some rotation and all that stuff wouldn't be abnormal. Number one, because it's January. Number two, earnings season. Number three, we're two and a half months into this intermediate term rally. Not that it has to have a you know, there's not a time limit to it, but you know, the further you go, the more that there's going to be some profit taking and cross currents and things like that. So overall, still bullish, but at the same time, still kind of picking my spots on the buy side. I'm not plowing into everything just because it's hitting a new high here. I'm not saying, hey, we had, you know, four days of weakness last week, therefore the correction's over. Now we're going to go up for another three months. It's probably going to be trickier than that. Okay. But overall, Obviously, like I said, far more bullish than not. And, you know, the vast majority of intermediate and even longer term evidence still supportive. OK, and Cabot Growth Investors model portfolio, we came into the year about 20 percent cash. We did a little, you know, sold a chunk last week, bought a chunk this week. We're about 20 percent cash. I do see some things that maybe say the market pulls in or there's some rotation. We are starting to get some stocks that are, you know, two, three weeks, maybe three weeks at this point. Maybe next week would be four weeks into some sort of rest period, 10 week line catches up. You know, those might be some decent risk reward situations. If they don't work, they don't work, but limited losses, that sort of thing. And obviously bigger upside potential, okay? So we'll see how it goes, but right now bullish, but you know, don't leave your uh, you know brain at the door either. Try to find some pretty good entry points, all right? All right, let's hop into the charts. As usual, I'm using a program called MarketSmith. You can learn more at um, marketsmith.com. It's a product of Investors Business Daily. So. Here's the NASDAQ. So, you know, two things. Short term, it, it is kind of straight down, straight back up. You kind of have this 15,000 level, you know, whatever, round number resistance sort of thing. So, again, it would not shock me short term if we were start reporting earnings and boom, 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 you know, maybe pull back or chop around further. I mean, maybe this is a top and we break down. Who knows? Anything is possible. You want to keep an open mind. But overall, I mean, at this point, you know, we still have a decent amount of daylight here to the 50 day line, which is key for the intermediate term. And the fact that it did rebound, um, it's no guarantee, but you know, pulling back like this and rebounding back here is a lot better than pulling back like this and just sort of sitting there for the next week. So, you know, again, I'm not reading too much into everything given the January effect, so to speak. Um, but so far, so good in terms of the intermediate term trend and the snapback. Okay, S&P 500, just a little bit stronger. It did actually kind of nose out to a new high here the last couple of days. But same sort of thing, just kind of basically recouped all of its losses, still above, you know, um, intermediate term support and whatnot. Now, small caps have been struggling. They, you know, there was kind of obvious, this is the IWM, depends on the index, they're slightly different. So you can see it has kind of come back, uh, came down, excuse me, and it's just kind of sitting there, like I said. Same sort of thing for mid caps. You can see kind of pulled back just kind of sitting there for the most part. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Maybe, you know, the broad market was kind of the laggard last year for the most part. Maybe it's going to be the kind of the same sort of rug pull going forward. Again, you want to keep an open mind. Um, but at this point, again, they just had such a big run 
that they're still pretty healthily above their 50 day moving averages. So let's see how it goes. I mean, they're not, I mean, indexes aren't going to be dynamic. Let me um, bear with me, talk amongst yourself. How do I change this? Okay. So this expands the chart a little bit, but on the weekly chart, but so this is like MDY just to use an example. So, you know, it tried to kind of quote breakout. Now the breakout is quote failed, but you know, we'll see how it goes. I'm not a big breakout player on indexes. I've mentioned that a hundred times, but again, you're kind of now three weeks into this pullback, I guess I would call it on the MDY, but here comes the 10 week line right here moving up. So let's see what happens next week. Maybe we get a little bit more weakness. We intersect with a 10 week line, 50 days starting to catch up, that sort of thing. Um, so far, so good, always watching, but I would just say the odds favor higher prices ahead, okay? Um, just scanning some other evidence. You know me, I like to keep an eye on the defensive stocks. This is XLP. XLP looks fine, nice sort of persistent uptrend, but relative to the market, Yes, it popped here for a couple weeks, pulled back. Again, monitoring it, maybe if the relative performance line does this the next week or two, that's a yellow flag, but just going with the evidence in front of us, nothing big. Then the POWA is kind of an index. It's a thin ETF, but it's a it tracks an index of stocks that have very consistent results. So it's relatively defensive, but there's a little growth to it. Obviously it's had a big move as you can see on the chart, but again, relative to the market, this blue line is the relative performance line. It's really not, you know, doing anything of note. So it, long story short, um, not seeing that much there. Um, the only sector I'd mention this is XLF. So financials, big big run here. Bunch of bank re reported today. So we'll see what you know. You can see today it's kind of reversing, but we'll see what happens here in the days ahead. Just noting it's kind of stalled out a little bit here. Obviously, if the XLF starts to pull in financial stocks, that's probably going to have an effect on the market. Not predicting that, just saying maybe keep an eye on it. JP Morgan is clearly the leader here. It's had an amazing run, as you can see. This is JPM and kind of tailing today, as they call it, on earnings. But again, it's kind of like short term. This is what I mean. Short term wouldn't surprise me to see some more ups and downs and rotation and, you know, uneasy trading, so to speak. Um, but you can't really throw stones at the intermediate term trend, still well above the 50 day line. And even today, it's just it's just one day at this point. OK, um, the other thing I would just say is I, I, you don't want to get too close to the market again. You know, you have this few days down, a few days up, that sort of thing. This is the Nasdaq, but you can use it as sort of short term relative strength in terms of maybe stocks that are comparable to each other or in the same theme, obviously same sector. But, you know, just like one example is. I've been following some of these old, quote unquote, old lead, old meeting. They were leaders during the pandemic, you know, three years ago. <laughs> but, you know, old leaders like here's Cloudflare. And again, it looks fine overall, but you can kind of see how it's pulled back. And, you know, you just look at that chart and it looks OK, but not like a strong bounce. Then you look at something like Shopify, SHOP. It got hit and then right back to, to higher highs. OK. It doesn't guarantee. I'm not saying Shopify make that makes it a great buy here and cloud fail. Cloud flare, easy for me to say, is, you know, in the toilet. I'm just saying, you know, relative, relatively speaking, if you're going to target one of these stocks, it might be Shopify, maybe on a pullback, but, you know, that sort of thing, because it's showing higher relative strength. Same thing with like, here's Blackstone. It looked great. This is, um, you know, one of the bull market stocks. Um, let me change this back to this. Okay. It looked great on this breakout attempt. Now it's pulling back. It's not broken. It's kind of down. This is kind of one of these names that's coming down toward the 10 week line, 50 day line. So it's kind of near the moment of truth. So Blackstone, OK, not great. You'd like to see some better action, but not broken. But then you have like KKR, which is in the same group. And again, I'm not saying it can't pull back, but so far holding the 25 day line pretty tightly. So if you do have a couple of names that are obviously if it's like, you know, housing names or something like that, are very similar. But if you have some of these growth names you're looking at, sometimes as these days go by and we're kind of in this pullback, say we do pull back next week, see which ones hold up the best and are kind of trading in a calm range like this so far, KKR so far, um, versus, you know, things that are just kind of falling and maybe not broken, but they're not really inspiring either. OK, now in terms of individual stocks, just kind of a potpourri of names. So NVIDIA was kind of the whoops, uh, NVIDIA was kind of the I don't know, what do I want to say? The glamour stock or the leading stock that really moved this week that caught the attention. It had been kind of quote lagging, but not really. I mean, it had such a big run here. And if you just look at the chart, it's not lagging. And the last two or three months, just look how tight that is. It's very, it's a very good sign when it kind of goes, 
kind of loose and then tighter and tighter and then very tight, not just for a day or two or three, but for, I don't even know, six, seven, eight weeks, it was less than 10%. And now you have this big vol. You can see the volume dry up here around the year end and the beginning of the year. And now big volume buying. Is it off to the races again? Maybe we'll see. I don't, I, you know, I don't think it's going to do what it did last spring, so to speak. That was, you know, the first early stage. So it's, it's more obvious at this point. But that's a good sign to me for chips, obviously, uh, and the group as a whole. Um, AMD is another chip stock. Interestingly, they're kind of competing. You know, they release sort of an AI chip, and there's all this, you know, who's going to win the battle and this and all, all that. But just following the chart, I mean, NVIDIA is definitely more of a leader. And like I've, I'll, I always say with AMD, AMD has a history of like, you know, just sort of big moves, and then it pulls back and goes dead, and then a big move. You know, so it's harder. It's harder for to trust it. Nevertheless, um, just going from what you see here the last couple of months, the stock has clearly changed character here in the last two and a half months with the market. Um, just big volume up. And then on this latest pullback here, you can see 25 day line, nice snap back and actually had three good days of volume here. So anyway, chip stocks looking pretty good. Nvidia breakout helps that group and probably helps the story for growth stocks as a whole. Um, just moving on. Some of these I've mentioned before, some of them I haven't. Um, App Lovin'. This is one of those names, kind of like Eli Lilly, which I'm actually not going to show a chart of this week. But, you know, it had a big run rebound last year. And so, quote unquote, it's lagging so far in this rally, but it's kind of already moved. You know, it's not like it didn't break out earlier last year. And now you just kind of have this base setting up. And this might be one of these names that, like I just said with NVIDIA, it's kind of been do it's not a, it's not super loose, but it's kind of been doing one of these things, right? Now let's see if it can kind of maybe do one of these for a couple of weeks and then get ready to go. So, so far, it's just kind of handling itself well. No big selling in here. You know, you can see on the weekly chart, nothing, no big red flags. Great story, great growth going forward. Let's see if it can kind of shape up and eventually break out, okay? Um, Dave & Buster's is, you know, retail is still hit and miss. There's really not a lot of retail stuff. There, some of these turnaround retailers like an Abercrombie & Fitch, this is a and F. Um, great run here, but... Are you in the first inning of this move? Probably not. My guess is this is probably going to be more a sell on strength if it keeps going than anything. But there's some of these turnaround retailers. They're not really growth stories. Um, nothing wrong with them. But at this point, they're kind of the horses out of the barn. Dave & Buster's is sort of a turnaround story as well. But it's had this pullback here. To me, it looks totally normal. This was kind of a weird day of volume. So that's not ideal. But overall, you know, it's kind of back below 50. But it, it's it to me, it looks pretty kind of nice. To me, it would be sort of one of these resumption patterns. You know, maybe it just dies. And you never hear from again. It's not like Dave and Buster's is some revolutionary company. But if the stock can kind of hang in there and then sort of resume its advance on some volume, my guess is the stock overall can do well. And on the weekly chart, it's just got this endless base consolidation. And, you know, this certainly looked like a change in character here the last few weeks. Let's see if that follows through, okay? Um, How Met Aerospace, HWM, just find it interesting. Number one on the weekly chart, again, it's an aerospace stock, not the most volatile, but you, you do have a 10-week line test here, probably a little bit hard to see, but 10-week line test that's successful. And this kind of happened this week was the whole Boeing doors falling off thing. I, I actually don't really know all the details of it. Um, but either way, a lot of these things are actually finding support on that news as opposed to getting hit, except for Boeing, of course, and actually gap to new highs here. Um, you can do what you want with it, but, you know, overall, but overall it looks pretty good. OK, um, Neurocrine Biosciences. I still like the action of XBI just to pull this up. This is Biotech. Yes, there's been some M&A rumors and a lot of M&A activity. Um, so you can kind of see it's just kind of very, it's a little jagged, but still very strong. Neurocrine Bioscience is not quite as volatile in here. And if you really back out to the weekly chart, um, you know, to me, this looks like a big kind of base in here. Broke out. It's had, I don't know, weeks in a row of, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks up in a row, four of them in a row of above average volume kind of on the breakout and follow through. And now it's just kind of sitting here. Again, it's not the most volatile name, but it's kind of just sitting here pretty tight. They have earnings on February 6th, so they're kind of coming up sort of over the horizon here. Um, but NBIX looks good. Um, this is admittedly one of my, uh, not binky, but just sort of something I keep an eye on. This is Procore. It's it's cloud software, but it's for the construction industry. So it's one of these niche um, markets and players. Um, looked like it was trying, you know, kind of a higher high here, kind of a higher high here. Looked like it was basing out 
got killed right at the end of the market decline in October. I think that's when it was. But to me, this kind of looks like a shakeout because ever since that day uh, or two, you know, here's the big gap down on earnings. And ever since then, it's just been kind of moving higher. There's resistance right around here. I'm not saying that's some exact buy point. I'm not saying that, but just overall PCOR, it's an interesting setup to me. It's a new issue. It's got good growth. It's profit, turning profitable cash flow, yada, yada, yada. And then you have this big shakeout that maybe that was what it needed to clear the air. And of course, the Fed being on our side, or at least not against us, might help. Um, Vertiv, now you're going to say, Mike, you just showed me Abercrombie and Fitch and said that was too late. What's what's with VRT? Hasn't this had a huge run? It has, so you're not in the first inning. But sometimes the end of these moves are the best, okay? 50 has been round number resistance for VRT for the last, whatever, four weeks or something. But it hasn't done anything wrong. There's been no selling. The numbers are great. Earnings aren't out for another, whatever, February 21st. So that's more than a month away. Kind of had this 10-week line test. I just wonder... Um, Again, I don't want to say it's a trade, but like, you know, above 50 in a decisive way. I'm not recommending that. I don't give specific recommendations on this video. I'm just looking at the pattern just saying 50 has been kind of a wall. Maybe if it overcomes it, it's ready to kind of continue its up move for as long as it wants to go. OK, a few more here. A firm. I think I mentioned this last week. Um, let's see how it goes. It, it more than doubled here. Kind of a flagpole, so to speak, here. Um, sharp pullback, but certainly not abnormal. Very low volume here the last couple of weeks. I mean, it looks like this week it's on pace to be 37% below average volume, you know, trading volume. And so let's see, this is might be, again, this is one of those where maybe it just drips lower and it's like, forget it. It's just, you know, not going to work. But if it can kind of hang in here, maybe start to resume its advance. It's speculative, speculative it's volatile, but I'm kind of intrigued by it. Uh, Natera, just mentioning this, this is, it's got some resistance here, but these are, this is one of the, um, one of many biotech firms and medical firms that released guidance this week way above Q4 estimates. So it had a good initial move. Now it's pulled back. So, you know, it's choppy. It's a little bit thinner, um, not thinner, but just it's kind of a choppy performer, but just something I'm keeping a distant eye on because it does have a good story and it does kind of have this long sloppy but long bottoming effort. And if it can just kind of get going, it could be in play here. Um, Fresh Pet, whoops, FRPT. Uh, I think I mentioned this last week, but just kind of like, you know, one of these one of these smaller growth names that when the market wasn't in gear, it couldn't get going at all. Uh, but now that the market's sort of in gear, acting well, um, acts pretty well in here. Yes, it's pulled back this this week, this month so far, but just to the 25 day line. And last but not least, Monday.com. This is the Israeli software firm. Um, it's always had great growth. It's very liquid. Um, it has pretty decent sponsorship, 500 funds. But it's just super volatile. And of course, you know, the war overseas and all that uncertainty didn't help. Um, but net net, you kind of have this long, not long, but multi-month consolidation in here. It tried to get going near the end of the year, you know, got clonked here early, you know, the first couple days of the year, but really came back strongly. This is one of those. So, you know, there is the 200, again, round number resistance, but just a name that maybe could set up here in the next week or two. OK, so just big picture, just to sum, just to sum up. You know, the vast majority of evidence is bullish, so I'm bullish. The vast majority of leaders are acting well, so I'm optimistic. Um, at the same time, you know, we're two and a half months into the intermediate term rally. It's still January. Earnings season is coming up. So I'm just saying don't. I'm just saying when the market goes up five days in a row, I'm not saying go sell five stocks, but I am saying maybe you shouldn't go buy five stocks, so to speak, you know, and just see how things shake out. And, and if we do get some rotation or earnings move, there should be some more opportunities that pop up at good risk reward entry levels here in the days, you know, and hopefully weeks ahead. Okay, that's all the time I have for today. Thanks for listening. And be sure to come by again next week for another Cabot Weekly Review.